Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Before we get started on today's video, I want to announce that Come Again has two new channels for you guys to enjoy. If you're into collectible and toy reviews, then head on over to Come Again Collectibles, where all of our new and previously uploaded collectible review videos will be published from now on. Also, if you're into Funko Pops and Action Vinyls, head on over to Come Again Vinyls, where all new and previously uploaded pop review videos will be uploaded. We will no longer be publishing these videos onto the main channel, due to the success of our shows like History and Origins. We don't want to upset the algorithm or the subscribers, so if that's what you're interested in, the links will be in the description below. Now on to our video. Earth is dead. Those who once might have called it home are long scattered to the endless stars. But in that scattering, on a thousand different worlds, by a thousand different ways, Earth's greatest legends live on. Legends of the Dead Earth was a large crossover spanning through all of DC's annuals in the year 1996. It featured stories about a possible future of the universe, in which although the planet Earth itself had long since died out and its heroes gone with it, the heroes still left an impression and their stories and legends were passed down in various ways. Many if not all of these legends, were spread around the universe by Martian Manhunter as his way of honoring the lives of his departed friends upon the death of his adopted planet. Something you guys should know is Legends of the Dead Earth wasn't an Elseworlds title per se. It wasn't branded as Elseworlds. It was branded as Legends of the Dead Earth. Mainly because most Legends of the Dead Earth revolve around an alternate reality, an alternate dimension within the DC Universe. An alternate Earth, as you will. Whereas Legends of the Dead Earth is a possible future in continuity for the 1990s DC era. The comics this event took place in were Action Comics Annual Number 8, Adventures of Superman Annual Number 8, Aquaman Annual Volume 5 Number 2, Azrael Annual Number 2, Batman Annual Number 20, Batman Shadow of the Bat Annual number 4, Catwoman Annual Volume 2 number 3, Detective Comics Annual number 9, The Flash Annual Volume 2 number 9, Green Lantern Annual Volume 3 number 5, Guy Gardner Warrior Annual number 2, Impulse Annual number 1, Justice League America Annual number 10, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight Annual number 6, Legion of Superheroes Annual number 7 Volume 4, Legionnaires Annual Number 3, The Power of Shazam Annual Number 1, Robin Annual Volume 4 Number 5, Sovereign 7 Annual Number 2, Starman Annual Volume 2 Number 1, Superboy Annual Volume 4 Number 3, Supergirl Annual Volume 4 Number 1, Superman Annual Volume 2 Number 8, Superman the Man of Steel Annual Number 5, and Wonder Woman Annual Volume 2 Number 5. Some of you may remember a video I did a while back on Robin's Legends of the Dead Earth, which I said was kind of like a Batman and Robin version of Logan's run. The synopsis for the story is that Batman was once a kind of police officer on a spaceship called Gotham. He learned that the ship wasn't actually going anywhere due to a malfunction in the navigation system. He then took on the identity of a character from Old Earth folklore and tried to find a way into the ship's main computer. He eventually happens upon Triss Plover and takes her to his hideout, telling her of the universe beyond the ship and of the birth and death cycle. He eventually makes Triss the new Robin and allows her to aid him on his quest to find the main computer. They break into police headquarters and begin to fight the swarms of police he calls Jokers that are inside. He calls them this because the ships are machines that resemble Joker from the main continuity universe. Batman fights them and sends Triss to the computer, after which Batman is shot and killed by police. Triss eventually manages to get the computer back up and running. However, she realizes that by the time they get to a new planet, she's going to be long gone. It's going to be several generations later. Uh, most of the people who are on the ship will be long gone. So she has no choice but to respect the uh, life cycle on the ship. Uh, in order to prevent overpopulation. And like I said, it's very similar to Logan's run. Uh, whereas if you guys have seen the movie, uh, in, in there... Once the characters reach a certain age, they are gone to, uh, it's been a while since I've seen it, but they're gone for what they call something like recycling or whatever. 
Uh, they go and their bodies are destroyed essentially, but they're supposed to be reborn in new younger bodies. Very complicated. This story is very reminiscent of that. In the Batman number 20 annual, a future set in the domed city ruled by a government that mind controls its citizens on an unnamed planet, an old man spins tales for a group of children who are unwittingly being groomed for re-education. The fables revolve around the mythological Batman who resided on the once thriving planet Earth, each story coming with a special moral imparted by the old man to the children as a way of subtly warning them against their own government's sinister plans. In the first story, the Magister, or the Magister as he was referred to, a techno wizard crossed between the Joker and the Mad Hatter who uses the populace's hologram entertainment to brainwash people into hysterical laughter, leaving them open to being robbed and murdered. The moral, the worst crimes may be the crimes against the mind and don't let anyone force you to think their way. After the children are sent to the re-education center, the old man reveals himself as a Batman cyborg working with a resistance movement, and he saves the children. While the nature of this Batman is never explained, the message is clear. As long as people like the old man tell stories about the Batman, then legends like the Batman will never truly die. Each of the stories in this annual followed along this path which other annuals showed different possible futures, such as Batman and Catwoman being criminals who were being chased and eventually killed by Commissioner Joker. That, that was one of my favorites growing up. In the Superboy annual, a sun-worshipping medieval society chooses a flying teenager to become the new Superboy. But when he learns that the Superman of the world is corrupt, it falls on to him to take down his superior, an act which in and of itself is a terrible crime. In Superman number 8 annual from 1996, Superman's mind has been contained within a computer and he gives one of Superman's powers to a group of heroes each. One is given Superman's strength, one his speed, one flight, and so on. Superman is meant to send this team of Supermen where they're needed, but it's discovered that Superman himself is causing the disasters, which means the team had to go up against the original. However, there at the end, it's learned that Superman is ready to rest in peace. He caused these disasters knowing that his supermen would stop them, knowing that no one was really in danger. And he did it so that he could rest in peace, so that they would shut him down, so that he could finally be with Lois. Uh, because he couldn't really shut himself down, and realized the only way he would be allowed to die is if people thought he had turned evil. This was a really interesting group of stories at the time, and I personally really enjoyed them. I haven't read them all, but the ones I have read really stuck in my mind even over 20 years later. I managed to attain a few of them off the rack in 1996, like Superboy number three, Superman number eight, Batman number 20, Catwoman number three, and Robin number five. Then a few years ago, I managed to pick up Man of Steel number five, Adventures of Superman number eight, and Green Lantern number five from the Legends of Dead Earth line. Of course, my original issues were lost to time and I had to repurchase them a few years ago. But again, I really enjoyed them, especially Catwoman number three, really stuck in my mind over the years. Just talking about them with you guys right now makes me want to break out my issues and reread them, as well as buy the rest of the collection. If you have a chance, pick yourself up a set and give them a read. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.